American Counter-Strike players are dancing the shuffle. Some new teams join the League Championship Series and Capcom partners with Sony to make some fighting game players rich. I'm John Reiser, and with me as always are Meg Turney and the Daily Dots' Jared Wynn. Hello, everybody. Here's what you need to know. Counter-Strike players in North America are flying left and right these days. The KS all started with I by Power, the region's top team, bringing Sam Day's Marine in to lead the squad shortly after kicking him from the team. This was followed by Spencer Hiko Martin walking away from Cloud9, who replaced him with Shahzeb Shazam Khan, now formerly of Denial, who replaced Khan with Eric Adren Hogue, formerly of I by Power. Hopefully you caught all that and I got all those damn names right, <laughs> motherfucker. Jared, help us make sense of this mess. Well, you all knew them ahead of time, so you didn't have to get them hey, right just now. Hey, yeah. I did, you were excited for me too. I you saw you over there. You don't so see other news people doing that when they get a string that was of names. A lot of names. <laughs> Bam! Yeah. Right off the prompter. <laughs> what? I did my job. I did it. Getting paid. Whatever. So, uh, <laughs> these, these teams and players, yeah, it's just a big mess. It's a big shuffle. It's a big shuffling mess. So Cloud9 gets rid of, oh, they didn't get rid of Hiko. Hiko leaves Cloud9 after rumors he would leave and rumors nothing would leave because nothing lacks motivation. And you have Dazed who was kicked by I by Power previously coming back to I by Power because they felt like they were better with him than without him. So why'd you kick him in the first place? That's, that's a, a weird one here. I by Power beats LDLC who are maybe the best team in the world today unless you count Fnatic who are kind of in this weird position because of the rumors about them. They beat LDLC in a series. They play really well, finish second to Fnatic at a big event and they kick their leader. And then just right around the corner, they get him back. Because like, you know what? We made a mistake. Then the guy they brought in, uh, Nitro and Desi, the guys they brought in, Nitro and Desi, are both out of the team now because they have Hiko, who just left Cloud9, playing for them as a stand-in. But next year, he'll probably come on full-time, suggesting that, assuming the, uh, the stand-in position goes well. Then you have Denial picking up two former I Buy Power players to replace players who are stolen by Cloud9 and I Buy Power, who are the top two teams in the country. You guys... Yeah, no, going? I feel good. Not at all. Baby, come back. I feel like that's your play all the time. It does, it does just sound like a big old soap opera that people aren't think, thinking about decisions before they're doing it. They're just like, let's do whatever we think right when we think well, about it. You say that. It's funny because uh, Shazam, it's become pretty clear, tried to leave Denial to go to Cloud9 before being contractually, having his contract worked out to go do so. So that actually happened. Yeah. He just tried to do it without thinking about yeah. it. But he's on contract with Denial. So you have to you have to process the whole you know contract thing. You're under contract. You got to go somewhere else. So it's a big mess. Uh, it's it's unfortunate, really, because there are some really good players involved here, and these teams have a tremendous amount of potential if they would just settle down <laughs> and let it play out. Like, Jared, why? do you just want to talk Nothing to the teams? Nothing in Counter Strike will ever be settled down. down. Wait, I want all, Counter Strike, Call of Duty, down. everybody can settle I want down. everyone involved here to just come, come to me for a second, okay? <laughs> stop. <laughs> I want you to stop. It's enough. I've given that look to my four-year-old several That's times. What Jared, you're doing right now? That's like Jerry Springer's final thought. That was Jared's, was Jared's yeah, final thought for the day. I mean, it could work out. Cloud9 could be well off with Shazam. Uh, Hiko has struggled at recent tournaments, so maybe they're going to do well now. Um, how does he fit in chemistry-wise? We don't know. Uh, he does take over our sniping position, so now we don't have Sean Gears or Symphys trying to share that role. It gives them some more definition in their team roles, I guess. We'll see how it works out. I by Power are, should be in good position now. They have Dazed back, who should not have been gone in the first place, and they have Hiko joining. If he can get back in form, that's a great team on paper. But do they have chemistry issues because their leader was recently kicked from the team before he was brought back into it? And then Denial is just kind of looking sad on the sideline because this team had positioned itself to potentially break into this top two stranglehold that Cloud9 and I by Power in their different forms have had in North America. And then every time they get to that point, they have one of their best players taken from, by either Cloud9 or I by Power. So it's a big mess. It's just you want to see these teams solidify for a while so we can see what they can do mm -hmm. when they're solidified mm -hmm. instead of doing all this shit. Yeah. The Capcom Cup was held this weekend with 16 players from around the world coming together for such nations as the United States, Korea, France, and Singapore. The event was the culmination of the year-long Capcom Pro Tour, and ultimately it was a Japanese player, Yusuke Momochi, who would emerge victorious. Jared, was Momochi's victory expected, or was it a surprise? Anyone could have won at this tournament. Well, maybe not anyone, but the 16 players here were a very elite choice of players. So... There were big names like Daigo Umohara, one of the biggest names in fighting games, went out pretty quickly. And it was not really a surprise because the players here were just really strong. Bonchan, uh, runner-up at EVO, great player, great Japanese player, legendary player, went out pretty quickly. That's just the nature of this tournament. I also think it also shows um, how international uh, the top pool of players in fighting games have become because 
traditionally, the United States and Japan have been the two countries that really had the best players, the biggest names. And here we saw players from France, from Korea, from Singapore, from uh, United Kingdom, all making deep runs into the tournament. So that's a good sign. Uh, but yeah, Momochi from Japan ultimately wins it, and it's much deserved. Hmm. Much deserved, yeah. All right. Well, now Capcom took the time after the event to make a big announcement that they would be partnering with Sony to offer at least half a million dollars during next year's Capcom Pro Tour. Jared, what does this mean to the fighting game competitors? It's a huge influx of money. It's the type of money that has been seen in RTS genres and FPS. Uh, MOBAs have even more money because of the LCS and because of the international, but having that amount of money in fighting games is going to change things. It's just It's just that simple. In what way? Just adding more professionalism, adding more hotter competition, more reason to be a professional because now you have half a million dollars to compete for. So I incentive. Think, yeah, I think people often um, underestimate the, or overestimate, I should say, the amount of money involved in big fighting game competitions. Like Evo, for example, doesn't always put up that much money. Like the big events, the Street Fighter tournament at Evo isn't worth that much, especially compared to the tournaments we talk about for other games. So having this amount of money involved here just changes everything. We're going to see more teams getting involved, most likely more sponsors getting involved. Players will have a more professional mindset because they have so much money available for them to win. It's just going to change a lot of stuff, and we're going to see that um, come about naturally over the coming months. Yeah, that's interesting. Uh, Riot's League Championship Series is expanding in both North America and Europe from eight teams in each region to ten. That expansion necessitated a pair of expansion tournaments, and while the European competition is still ongoing, the North American tournament has been completed. Curse Academy and Team Coast were the teams to qualify, ultimately beating out Fusion, Game, Fusion Gaming in Final Five. Jared, any surprises here in this tournament? Not huge surprises. Team Coast was expected to go through. They had a harder time than some would expect. Curse Academy, actually the first team to qualify, and they were not really thought to be uh, a top contender. I mean, they were a dark horse, I would say, but not a top contender to get through. They don't really have the star power. Some of the other teams that were involved, like Team Coast, for example, who also qualified. They're also an interesting story because they're going to have to drop the Curse Academy name. Riot has these rules where uh, you can only have one team branded one way. So Team Curse is already in LCS. So you can't have Team Curse and Curse Academy. Curse Academy is basically a farm team for Team Curse who have now been successful enough to, uh, to make it there themselves. So this is their minor league team? Yeah, kind of. I mean, they've brought in players themselves who are very good, so it's, it's not exactly like that, but it is a player development system, basically, that Curse runs, which now is going to have to detach a little bit because of the weird rules Riot has, which are kind of vague anyway. It's just kind of a confusing thing, but yeah. They'll, they'll, they'll be around. So they'll still work. They can still work together. They just can't be named the same thing. They can't be named the same way. I mean, they can have a relationship, and that all teams have a relationship, um, practicing together and exchanging things. It's, just, it's all kind of weird, honestly. The way Riot handles it, it doesn't really make a lot of sense to me. Um, but you know, we can soapbox on Riot doing weird <laughs> stuff, or we can just move along with our with our lovely presentation that we have here today. Oh, all right. <laughs> I felt like it was about to get dark. <laughs> it wasn't too long ago that the popular streaming platform Twitch was bought up by Amazon for close to $1 billion. Mm. Now Twitch has been involved. It's 1990s. Can I make that joke? So <laughs> now Twitch has been involved in another big sale, but this time they're the big buyers. So topical. Twitch announced the acquisition of the Good Game Agency. If the name doesn't sound familiar, it's the organization behind such multi-game teams as Evil Geniuses and Alliance. The purchase price wasn't disclosed, but it's a big move for Twitch, who acquired the biggest team and player agency in esports after having already established themselves as the biggest broadcasting platform in esports. Jared, how big is this? Is this big? Is it big? It's so big. It's so big? So cool. big. How big? He had to ask multiple times yeah. how so big it is. So big. Is it so, well, Twitch, to put this in perspective, Twitch is already so powerful a platform that players will leave teams they are a part of because those teams sign to stream exclusively on other streaming platforms, like Azubu, for example. So I think it was Team Coast who signed with Azubu and all the Hearthstone players immediately leave the team because they need to stay on Twitch to make their living. That's how big and powerful Twitch is. They already right. control where players play. Now you have the biggest agency in esports as a whole under the umbrella of Twitch. Right. That brings even more control to them. Now, they've said officially, hey, we're not going to you know, have anything to do with where players uh, stream. We're not going to treat players any differently. You know, uh, Alex Garfield, the head of... GGA has said, hey, if players want to stream somewhere else, they can stream somewhere else. No big deal, guys. It's fine with us. That's bullshit. You know, let's be honest here. There, there's going to be preferential treatment for players who are under contract with a company that is owned by Twitch yeah. when they stream on Twitch. And there's going to be pressure on players who are under contract with that company 
to stay on Twitch because they essentially own their contracts because they own GGA. Yeah, it seems a little bit of monopolization of, of the whole thing. More than a little bit. It's it's a huge. <laughs> um, yeah, it, it, that's what it is. It's it's a huge conflict of interest too when you have a player representation uh, firm that is owned by a broadcasting platform right. that is the space for broadcasting any tournament or even players' casual matches that he he puts on uh, stream to make money from. So. There's a tremendous conflict here. And the people who are saying, hey, don't worry about it. You know, we're not going to do anything like this. We're not going to profit from this. And bullshit. If you're not going to benefit from it, if you're not going to profit from it, yeah. then why would you do it? You wouldn't have done right. it. Yeah, I mean, they can say we'll profit from it in terms of like, you're going to help us get more sponsors, you know, because UGA is so good at getting sponsorship deals and stuff. That's that's not going to do it alone. Like, there's, there's going to be more to this. Than, uh, than meets the eye, like a Transformer. Yes. I So I saw when this happened, we actually did a story about it here on The Know, but um, they haven't disclosed the amount that they were bought for, which is a little confusing to me, but I want to know because Sir Scoots was tweeting all about all this money, like all these vague tweets about how much money, and they said everybody, even the players that they're contracted with, everybody's going to get a piece of this deal. Like everyone's going to make money from this. I want to know how much money. Well, that alone is another reason why this is... <laughs> not, you know, there's there's bias here because the players who are contracted by GGA are going to get money from Twitch purchasing right. GGA. I mean, that that alone says, you know, this is not just... But uh, there's a lot of money involved, I think. Uh, the, the rumors out there are just for Alex Garfield in the millions, um, like 5 to 20, wow. somewhere in that ballpark. Uh, probably on the lower end, if I had to guess, than, than the upper end of 20, but um, he's making a lot of bank. Mm. from this. So again, the, the altruistic <laughs> idea of, you know, hey, we just want to bring this this great agency together with this great streaming platform. We're going to combine forces and everyone's going to benefit from it equally. It's nah. about money. <laughs> well, yeah, no, nah. Scoots tweeted that he doesn't have to worry about money anymore. And I was like, what is Can't he? Wait till I get to tweet Scoots that. is, he could be joking, but I don't think he's joking. Yeah, the, the motivation for a good game agency is money. The motivation for Twitch is having greater control of this entire area that they are, are in. That's, mm. that's what it comes down to. And they already have so much control that, again, just by existing, they're able to influence where players go to in terms of teams and organizations. Now they can directly influence that because they have the biggest influencer in terms of where a player goes to, team or organization, that exists in the space. And they're, it's only going to become bigger for them. If you think the price there is a little bit much for like an esports agency, they're not necessarily buying the biggest agency. They're buying the biggest player in this growing market by far and the most professional player in this growing market. They're buying that space. They're not buying just GGA. They're buying the opportunity to be the big player in town, maybe the only player in town on that level. So it's the benefit is pretty clear. The benefit to the scene as a whole, that's more questionable. Do you see it being like an MLG type situation where they really lock it down? I don't think like MLG because MLG is a situation they also have complete control over the game that they're involved with. Call of Duty, you're talking about the players mm -hmm. there, they can have a lot of sway with that because the only Call of Duty competitions, for the most part, are run by MLG. Right. So they have a lot of say in everything that Call of Duty players do. It does affect MLG running the MLG TV business, you know, their streaming business. How do you how do you compete now with Twitch if you are MLG or if you are Azubu and you're trying to run a streaming platform? Uh, that's a difficult question. You can't be Twitch right now because Twitch is so big and so good at what they do. They're going to get bigger and better at it. You have to approach it from a different angle. Maybe you get someone exclusively to put content on your service, content that is good and of high quality, and then you have like a niche there that you that you carve out for yourself and you make money off of that. You can't do the whole thing, though, like Twitch does because Twitch is now a social network as well. Excuse me. They, they People come to chat on Twitch. They come to watch like people that they have a relationship with, or they feel that way, uh, host games. It's just it's too big and powerful and you know godly now to, to be competed with in a traditional way. So you have to find alternative ways to compete in the pla in the streaming space. So it really changes the entire market dynamic. Thank and that Jared. has been market dynamics with Jared. Yes. That has been, yeah. <laughs> Today's leaderboard is business 101. Our economics <laughs> <sports>. segment. <laughs> yes. uh, well, that's it for the leaderboard this week. Join Meg and Ashley for the Know It All on Friday on the Roost Teeth channel where they'll bring you the biggest news stories of the week in one shot. In the meantime, for more gaming and entertainment news, make sure you click like and subscribe. And we'll see you next week for more from the leaderboard. GG, kids. GG. No read. We're done forever. <laughs> <laughs>